The following countries we're about to mention have admitted to possessing nuclear warheads, and as of 2019, there are 3,500 ready to be deployed with the turn of a key, while thousands more are just sitting around somewhere. Whether they're launched from the top of a nuclear submarine or on top of a guided missile, these weapons truly have the potential to usher in a total apocalypse. Will you be ready? Being able to create such advanced technology almost assures a country won't be the victim of a full-scale invasion unless someone is brought to their breaking point. Here are the countries with the most nukes. Are you guys ready for another action-packed American Eye video? Let's get on to it! Number 14. North Korea While many of us would like to see North Korea and their dictators completely wiped off the face of the planet, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Despite their threats to the US and our allies, we managed to avoid all that wars with them. Invading North Korea again would be like declaring war on China as well. China is still obligated to reinforce them since they're their strongest ally and trading partner. China sits in North Korea with as many as 3 million soldiers, and it's likely that they would do the same if a war was to break out again. However, the Chinese might also become a little bit weary of their allies after their nuclear tests in January and September of 2016. They've been quite open about their successful tests in their northwestern proving grounds not too far away from China. Many wonder how far they're actually able to go. Their most recent one had an estimated yield of 20 to 30 kilotons of TNT due to seismic activity. This would also put it as being possibly twice as powerful as a bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Number 13. Israel Israel was quite ambiguous with their stance on nuclear weapons for a while, but they could have a fairly good stockpile, which certainly makes the Negev nuclear research station a little bit mysterious. Isolated in the Negev desert, it's found about 13 kilometers southeast of the city of Dimona. No aircraft are allowed to fly over it, and it's heavily fenced off. Many believe that production of nuclear weapons began here in 1966. That's not all. Edward Teller, who also worked for the U.S., gave Israel advice on how to build hydrogen bombs, high atmospheric nuclear weapons, and missile tests were secretly conducted. In 1958, in Operation Argus, 18,000 kilometers south of Cape Town, South Africa, three modified X-17A missiles compete with warheads were detonated in the upper atmosphere. It was also a little bit mysteriously close to Antarctica. It was also revealed that Israel likely tested an atmospheric nuclear explosion in 1979 during the Vela incident in contradiction to the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Number 12. Pakistan Pakistan is one of the newer countries to join the Weapons of Mass Destruction Club, and their first official test took place in 1998 in the Rasko Hills of Balochistan. The disputed territory of Kashmir has made Pakistan even more eager to compete with their neighbors to the east. The border in this region is mainly referred to as the Line of Control, which is not a line well respected, but considered under the control of one of those two nations. Many feel as though Pakistan would be the country to most likely use one of their nukes. Estimates of the Pakistani nuclear arsenal is often debated, but analysis of the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists estimate anywhere from 70 to 90 nuclear warheads. The U.S. even spent about $100 million or so to protect the weapons from getting into the wrong hands. Number 11. India Many might underestimate India as a fighting force because they're not a Western industrialized country. But with over 1.2 billion people, the sheer manpower is too much to overlook, and there are some countries out there that they could probably overtake. Sworn enemies with Pakistan, this military often skirmishes for control of the land known as Kashmir. They're also increasing their nuclear arsenal, and it's believed that they have anywhere from 130 to 140 nuclear warheads. While India has one of the worst child malnutrition rates in the world, the government ranks high in military expenditure. They also used to have a large stockpile of chemical weapons, but they were convinced to destroy it in 2009. They've also conducted at least six nuclear tests, and their missiles have a range of 8,000 kilometers. India has also shown to have interest in building a neutron bomb, which is a low-yield thermonuclear weapon. This country was successful in completing what's known as the nuclear triad, which includes three different ways to deliver warheads. By planes, by missile silos, and by nuclear submarines. Number 10. Belgium The next five countries we're about to mention are NATO countries that have been given nuclear weapons by the U.S. One of those countries is Belgium, who keeps an estimated 20 nuclear warheads at the Klein Brogel Air Base in the eastern part of the country. There has been much controversy over them holding on to our nuclear sharing agreement. All the weapons require a dual key system, which can only be fired with simultaneous authorizations from Belgium and the US. No one has provided an official statement about nuclear weapons existing here until interviews with European heads of state admitted to it. Number 9. Germany while the Belgians are likely keeping their nukes underground in missile silos, the Germans are likely to be hiding their nukes that can be dropped from an airplane. 
The Buchel Air Base is found in western Germany, not too far away from the major city of Frankfurt. They would also need authorization from the U.S. in order to use the B-61 nuclear bomb. They have roughly 20 B-61s, which can be deployed with a wide variety of American aircraft. This includes aircraft such as B-52 bombers, stealth bombers, and F-18 Hornets. Number 8. The Netherlands Another NATO country makes our list, who's carrying about 20 nuclear weapons for us in case Russia just starts to mess around. These are being held at the Volkel Air Base in the southern part of the country. Many have theorized that the U.S. has been keeping nukes at this location since the early 1960s. Despite there being pretty clear evidence that they're keeping this kind of technology there, the Dutch won't officially recognize what's going on. But according to a book written by an Air Force pilot, many of the bombs that were moved here to this location came after the Cuban Missile Crisis. Number 7. Turkey Turkey was even more valuable strategically to place bombs, especially due to its close proximity to the Middle East and since it's close to Russia. Just 70 miles away from the country of Syria, there are approximately 50 nukes being stored at the Incirlik Air Base and have been considered a liability by some people. NATO has hinted at moving the bombs to another spot due to some increasing risk and instability in the area. What do you guys think? Should NATO move the nukes or what? Number 6. Italy Italy doesn't actually make their own nukes like we mentioned before, but due to its strategic location, close to Africa, Eastern Europe, Egypt, etc., NATO thinks it's an excellent place to put some radioactive firepower. The Aviano Air Base in northern Italy has been trying to go off the radar for quite some time now and is home to roughly 50 nuclear weapons. It's surrounded by barbed wire and patrolled with attack dogs for anyone trying to sneak in. It's also home to some controversies that the U.S. has tried to cover up. Number 5. The United Kingdom the United Kingdom was the third country to develop nuclear weapons, and the Americans really weren't too eager to hand over their technology that they created. The British had thought that the Manhattan Project was a joint project, but they would find out later on that they were wrong. They felt a little bit left out that the Americans had the atomic bomb, and they didn't. The American Atomic Energy Act of 1946 was announced, which restricted other countries from gaining too much info on the technology. The Brits worked on their own project for a while until they were able to show off their ability to produce a thermonuclear weapon in 1958. This photo here shows a bomb known as the Blue Danube, which was tested in the Montebello Islands in Australia. Number 4. China China has had nuclear weapons since 1964, and the exact number they're hiding from everyone remains a secret. They have, however, been flexing their muscles a little bit during military parades, which has made people speculate about 260 or so. Their goal wasn't to produce more mass weapons than the U.S., but simply make enough to keep them diplomatically relevant and to keep the Americans off their soil. China conducted their first nuclear test at the Lopner Test Base with the help of the Soviet engineers. John F. Kennedy was rather concerned about the testing and conducted covert operations to try to keep China from creating a nuke. They've also been able to discreetly obtain American prototypes and designs of intercontinental ballistic missiles and have access to a nuclear triad. Number 3. France France became the fourth nuclear power nation after the US, USSR, and Great Britain. They were eager to test out their destruction device and decided to launch their first test in the Algerian Saharan Desert in the 1960s with a bomb called the Gerboise Bleu. The huge cloud of sand that was released from the atom bomb apparently spread radioactivity in the neighboring countries and even the south of France. The French can deliver nukes from nuclear submarines or from aircraft if they choose to do so. You might be a little bit surprised to hear that France has conducted more tests than every other country combined besides the US and Russia. After doing some research on metropolitan France for possible testing locations, Algeria seemed like the best place. However, Algeria was not the best place to test out a hydrogen bomb. That of course will be reserved for the Pacific Ocean, not too far away from their territory of Tahiti. Two Ajin 10 nuclear tests appear to be enough. Number 2. The United States With the help of some of the best scientists in the world working on the Manhattan Project, the United States created the first atom bombs and dropped them on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The world was shocked by the amount of destruction that these weapons were capable of. One of the many sites across the U.S. that's become contaminated due to the Manhattan Project is the Hanford site. It was a site that had the first full-scale plutonium reactor in the world. The best plutonium found in the country was put to use here and responsible for creating the necessary ingredient to construct the first nuclear bombs. They continued to produce nuclear weapons here until the Cold War, and many of them were not tested. The United States' method of delivery would seem to be rather effective, utilizing the nuclear triad. Our first nuclear test took place in New Mexico, and since then, we've conducted roughly 1,054 nuclear tests in the Pacific Ocean and on our home soil, Nevada. But before we get to our number one, tell us how you would survive a nuclear apocalypse, and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. And number one, Russia. 
Russia has the largest force of tank units on the planet and will likely take a big opponent if not several nations to take them down, likely with a lot of nukes. Armies have literally frozen to death trying to invade the motherland, and the Russian winner is like nothing to underestimate. But the main reason that no one has the guts to attack Russia is due to the fear of their enormous nuclear stockpile, which is easily enough to destroy the world at least 500 times. As of 2016, Russia possesses an arsenal of 7,300 total nuclear warheads, nearly half of the world's supply. Anyone living in Moscow likely lives 50 miles away from a nuclear weapon. This is one of the most concentrated areas for storing nuclear warheads, too. A controversial decision recently was to move a nuclear warhead near the city of Kaliningrad, which is under Russian control, surrounded by the NATO countries, and isn't connected to the mainland of Russia. So which one did you think was the most interesting? Let us know in the comments section, and we'll see you next time!